I'm back with Angela Hamblin Kelly, the administrator for Baptist Centers for Good Grief, to talk about the new grief center, Dorothy's Cottage. So before we go there, let me just ask mm -hmm. you a quick question because I wanted to mention we have so much going on with the shootings and our children are just kind of, you, you know, oh, harmed oh. and stuff. Yes. So tell me, what's something we can look for? Or how can we help? Sure, sure. Um, one of the main things with grief is a loss of security. And so that's an aspect of grief is feeling just not secure in our world. And I think mm -hmm. many people in our community are feeling that way right now because again there is so much around us and so talking about it is one of the most important things um, even coming down to safety planning a lot of times children feel better feel safer hmm. when they know there is a plan if something were to happen around you because quite frankly we can't tell them that nothing is going to happen right, right. so we let them know their school administrators have a plan as a family we have a plan and so talking about that can really eliminate a lot of stress for children that's a really good point mm -hmm. I love that mm -hmm. so tell us too I know we have a new location at Dorothy's yeah. Cottage, but tell me also, so you're at Mid, so you mentioned just four. We have four locations, okay. yes, with the Baptist Centers <clears throat> for Good Grief. So okay. two locations are on our Baptist Collierville campus. That's our Kimmons Wilson Family Center for Good Grief and Dorothy's Cottage that we just opened mm -hmm. uh, this week adjacent. We have Milla's House. That's our Midtown location. What's that's it called? Miller? Milla, Milla's House Milla's in memory house. of Milla Gieselman. Mm -hmm. um, and it's on the property of the Junior League at Highland and Central. And then we have our NEA Center for Good Grief across the river in Jonesboro. Nice. Nice. So how long has Good Grief been around? Angela? We've been around since 1999. So we're celebrating hey. our 25th uh, Camp Good Grief this summer. Yes. And how did they come up with the name Good Grief? I'm just curious. Because I love that. Like, Good right. Grief. Like, when, we, grief. when we were working on this, you know, grief is the most universal experience there is, but no one wants to talk about grief. And so we wanted to help families, help children, help adults find the good in their grief. And so it just hit us. Good Grief. Charlie good grief. Brown told Charlie us Brown, good grief. there uh, is good in it. None of us want grief. But what we right. do with our grief, how we learn to express it, process it, cope, we can find good again. Yeah, and we just can't run from it. Right. Right. I love what you said that even though you don't talk about it or share, it will find like it will manifest this itself in another way. Absolutely. Maybe not so good. Yes. You and know? that's the complete importance and the intention behind Dorothy's Cottage is all about gathering. So Dorothy's Cottage is meant for grievers to come together, whether that's our through our children's groups, our teen groups, families coming together, having a meal, and then working on an activity together. Because what we want to do is we want to help normalize grief. We want to bring the conversation out. We want people to talk about grief because when we do that, other things fall in line, meaning right. healthier bodies, healthier communities. So what do you think too, Angela, is something good to maybe share within a family that's gone through something? Is it like how soon should they seek counseling if they wanted to get it, you know? That is very individual for different families. I think the first thing that is important for families is to acknowledge the loss as a family. Mm -hmm. It's going to be natural that people are going to kind of pull inward because mm -hmm. somebody you deeply love is no longer here. And that person had a very important role in your family. Mm -hmm. And so that's not something that's going to just change overnight. So learning how to have conversations, memorialization, and knowing that memorialization is more than just a funeral service. Mm -hmm. You know, how do we continue uh, to talk about them and incorporate them in, in our family throughout the year? So not not necessarily tuck them away, right. but keep them active and exactly. alive, or the memory of exactly. it. Exactly. And how do we do that? And that looks different for all families. It does. I know yeah. how some people still like to go out maybe to the cemetery and Absolutely. visit. And some people find that crazy to do. It's just, right. I think it's whatever works for you. It is. It is. And I think that's the unfortunate thing about grief is a lot of times people end up grieving alone because yeah. people around them have so many, you know, what they think you should be doing or you should not be doing at this point. And grief is just so individual. Grief needs time and attention. Grief is an expression of love. So if we look at it that way, you know, why would we want to tuck it away? We don't want to tuck our love away. We yeah. want to we want to live a beautiful, healthy life with them. Yeah. But that's hard to do sometimes. And but but it can be done. You're sweet at it. I like your spirit. Thank, thank, thank you so you. much, Angela. That was wonderful. Thank you. All right, this has been a meaty topic, and we're doing we, I mean, we're doing it. It's something I tell you. We're headed to the kitchen for a heart healthy meal after the break. <laughs>